Lacrosse picks up a big win in the MAC. And tennis strikes a forehand. All this and more coming up on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome back to the Penguin Rundown. I'm Cameron Stubbs alongside Katie Rogers Vidala. And Katie, it's been some nice weather so far today. Yeah, it's been really nice out lately. And if it's no snow, I'm not complaining. But I love this nice weather. I hope it keeps up. Yeah, it's rare for this time of year yeah. in Ohio. Yeah. But uh, speaking of the outside, our outdoor teams have been struggling a little bit, including our softball team, which will get us started with first. Correct. And due to inclement weather, as Cameron said, the softball team's three-game series against Cleveland State was cut to just one that was played this past Sunday afternoon. Unfortunately, though, the softball team continued their offensive struggles as YSU's lone hit came from junior Conchetta Rinaldi's solo home run in the top of the first inning. Cleveland State pitcher Melissa Holz Holzofell had an impressive performance, not only keeping the Penguins scoreless after Rinaldi's homer, but off of the bases as well as she struck out 13 and walked zero. Following the loss, the softball team sat at 19 and 15 overall and was in fourth place in Horizon League standings. We caught up with Rinaldi after this weekend's performance. We struggled because we let her control the pace of the game. We didn't really take um, our approach to the plate, which was come up, be relaxed. She threw hard and she threw fast. She quick pitched us and that let us uh, determine our at bats. Last night, Youngstown State traveled to New York and battled Niagara University for their second series of the season. Be sure to check out YXSports.com for results and recaps of that game. And tonight, the team will stay in New York and compete against St. Bonaventure in a double header starting at 2 p.m. and then return home and battle the Northern Kentucky Norse for a three game series on Friday and Saturday. The baseball team had a busy week that included five games stretching from Tuesday to Sunday. On Wednesday, YSU opened up at home for the first time after a 28-game road trip to begin the season. The Penguins took on the Pitt Panthers for the second time in midweek play. On Wednesday, the chilly temperatures affected the bats as YSU only produced one run in a 9-1 deficit in the home opener. YSU had multiple opportunities, but the team left 11 runners on base. YSU freshman reliever Brandon Mikos had his best bullpen outing of the season, tossing three innings and only giving up one hit and zero earned runs. The team lost the midweek matchup to split the season series with the Panthers. The Penguins stayed at Eastwood Field over the weekend in a three-game Horizon League series against Northern Kentucky. In Game 1 on Friday, the offensive struggles continued for the Penguins, scattering just three hits to drop Game 1 of the series 9-0. NKU put up a four spot in the seventh and ninth innings to shut out YSU for the fourth time this season. On Saturday, NKU continued to swing the bats well, adding 15 more hits in game two to match their runs. The North scored 15 runs while holding Youngstown State to three. Northern Kentucky's second baseman Liam McFadden Ackman had a career day going four for five at the plate. YSU senior catcher Dylan Swarmer it had a multi-hit performance going two for four at the plate with an RBI. NKU won the series in game two by a final score of 15 to three. The Gwens looked to salvage the series on Sunday, but another clutch hitting performance by Northern Kentucky led to a sweep. NKU had an eight to five lead in the seventh until Lucas Nasanti had an RBI triple. An error by NKU's second baseman allowed Nasanti to score and make it a one run lead. The Norse added an insurance run in the ninth on a solo blast by Ryan Glass. True freshman reliever Andrew Malern had a 1-2-3 inning to save the game and give NKU a three-game sweep over YSU. Our very own Kyle Wills talked to head coach Dan Bertolini and senior outfielder Lucas Nasante about the weekend series. You know, I, I, give, I give a lot of credit to Northern Kentucky. They, they, they played a good series this weekend. They pitched, um, they got hits when they needed to, and, and they played the game, you know, really hard. And, um, I'm just happy with the way that we kind of battled today. At least it, it's a sign of some positivity moving into the next week. Definitely some, some progress in today's game, and um, we're moving in the right direction. You know, it stinks still uh, that we lost, but, you know, there's definitely some positives to take away. And there's, in this game and this sport, there's no time, to, you know, to pout. We play Tuesday, so right back at it and, you know, just keep our heads up. The Penguins took on the struggling Niagara Purple, Purple Eagles yesterday. Check out YSUSports.com for the results. 
The team also takes on Milwaukee at home this weekend in a three-game series starting on Thursday. First pitch is on Thursday, is set for 5 p.m. As for the bowling team, they traveled up to Lansing, Michigan to take part in the National Collegiate Women's Bowling Championship Tournament. Day one for the bowlers saw the Penguins split matches with a 2-1 loss to Arkansas State University and a 2-0 win versus Alabama State University. Game one's loss was a mega match that saw the Penguins claim the traditional round, being led by freshman Jade Cote, who bowled six strikes in her 239 scored game. Arkansas State then took all five of the Bakers matches and four more in the best of seven round. In game two, senior Emma Dockery and Cote led the way in the 2-0 sweep with scores of 200 and 197. This win set up an elimination game versus Arkansas State on day two. The Penguins lost their mega match against the Red Wolves 2-1. The Penguins took the traditional match point led by junior Megan Graham's 233 score. Cote, Dockery, and freshman Lindsey Ennis all eclipsed the 200 mark. The loss of the Bakers took the match up to the best of seven sudden death where the Penguins dropped four straight to end their season. However, congratulations to the Bullock team on a, such a successful season and congrats to seniors Emma Wren, Emma Dockery, and Sarah Florence on their careers here at Youngstown State. And now for more on the Bullock team and their season, we're going to send it over to Kyle and Caleb at the roundtable. Welcome into the roundtable. Kyle Willis here alongside Caleb Ellison. We're going to be recapping the bowling team as they lost in the NCAA Lansing Regional Tournament to Arkansas State. And Caleb, this team's going to be losing quite a bit of seniors. They're going to be losing the Emmas and Emma Wren and Emma Dockery, along with Sarah Florence. So kind of talk to me about the impact that those three seniors have had on this program. I mean, when it comes to Emma Wren, we're going to be talking about her first. She has really been an instrumental part of this program in her four years here. She was the first individual champion at a tournament in program history. That was back in 2019 at the Mount Shootout Tournament. And then after her junior year last year, she was named to the Southland Bowling League All-Academic Team. And so when it comes to just absolute skill and passion for this bowling program, Emma Wren is definitely the definition of that. And going on to her first name counterpart, Emma Dockery, she's a really strong performer as well. When you look at the YSU record books, she is second and third place for the best single game score in program history, and she has the most matches bowled in the program as well. So really, she has been just a fundamental part of the program here under coach Doug Kraberski. And then the third senior named here was Sarah Florence, and unfortunately, she missed most of her senior experience due to an injury. But going back to before the season, going back to around 2019, she was a really strong Baker play performer. And just when it comes to overall group work and those types of games in the tournaments, that's where she excelled most at. Now, it sounds like there's a lot of talent that this team's going to be losing come next year. However, there are some underclassmen that have been playing really well, one of those being Jade Cote. So what, what can you tell me about her? Absolutely. Jade Cote, a freshman from Quebec, so an international student here in the program, and she had an amazing season. Back in February at the Big Red Invitational, she averaged the best individual average score for a single tournament for the entire season when she averaged 258 pins at that Big Red Invitational. So she's been really instrumental, absolutely a freshman breakout here. And then looking at the roster going into the next season, we're gonna have lots of sophomores, lots of juniors. I'm not really sure what the freshman talent's looking like coming in, but if the trends stay the same of having strong freshmen following this season, then I'm sure YSU is looking in a pretty good position next year. Yeah, and like I said earlier, teams losing three seniors come next year, but they have some, un they have some underclassmen that have been performing really well so, so far this season. And looking at next year, what can you expect from this young group of, of, of players? Well, YSU definitely had high expectations going into this season. At the preseason polls by the National 10 Pin Coaches Association, YC was ranked 7th out of all Division I women's bowling teams, so very high praise for them. But now after losing three seniors and getting knocked out in the regional rounds of the NCAA tournament, that's definitely, you know, could take them some notches down in the pollings. However, you know, the trends of success, that's definitely something that's been building up here, and I'm sure it's here to stay going into the next season. So definitely expect, once again, a strong performance for the YC women's bowling team. Well, we have no more time to spare. That'll wrap it up for here at the round table. Let's roll it back to Katie and Cameron. Thanks, guys. 
It was a busy week for the YSU outdoor track and field team as they split the squad and competed at the Mount Union John Homan Open and at the Tennessee Relays. YSU started with the John Homan Open last Thursday, where they were four, where there were four Penguins Penguin event wins on the day. Junior Dominic Perry won the men's shot put throw with a 16.71 meters in, in the women's. 1500 meter run senior Lauren Dolak took first place with a time of four minutes and 46.27 seconds. Senior Maggie Sevist was the best in the 3000 meter steeplechase, finishing the first place, finishing in first place with a time of 11 minutes and 46.11 seconds. And the women's long jump junior Alexis Prater won first place and set a personal best with a leap of 5.61 meters. While the Penguins did not find much success on day one of the Tennessee Relays, that would turn around on day two, where, the la where last Friday, four different Penguins would finish top three in their respective events. Senior Sean Peterson took first place in the men's 800 meter with a time of one minute and 51.6 seconds. On his only legal attempt in the event, junior Ty Hunt took first place in the men's long jump with a distance of 7.8 meters and his teammate Daquane Watson finished, third, finished in third place with a jump of 7.4 meters. In the women's shot put, freshman Molly Radcliffe had a throw of 14.39 meters, which was good for a second place finish at the meet. The only, the only win in the final day came from senior Cambry Campbell in women's javelin with a throw of 37.85 meters. Saturday was day three of the pink, Day three for the Penguins at the Tennessee Relays, and while there wasn't any event wins on the day, YSU track history was made as senior Zach Gim set the program record for men's discus with a throw of 58.2 meters. This throw would be good enough to finish second on the day. Coming up next, YSU track and field will be traveling to Lewisburg, Pennsylvania this weekend to compete in the Bison Outdoor Classic hosted by Bucknell. The women's golf team resumed their spring schedule this past Saturday and Sunday at the Dolores Black Falcon Invitational at Stone Ridge Golf Club in Bowling Green, Ohio. The Penguins came into the tournament having momentum on their side as they were coming off of a second place finish back on March 22nd. The team placed sixth overall at the Invitational but with very difficult playing conditions. The Penguins were led by junior Dana Regola, who finished with a tie for 13th place with a two-round score of 154, while freshman Lizzie Sauer finished tied for 20th after posting a two-round score of 155. The Penguins finished one stroke ahead of 7th place Eastern Michigan. And up next, the team will host the YSU 2 Spring Invitational at Youngstown Country Club in Youngstown, Ohio on Friday the 15th. The men's golf team teed off at NKU's The Jewel, hosted by Northern Kentucky University. The event took place on Sunday through Monday at the Elks Run Golf Club in Botvia, Ohio. In the first day of the event, it ended with YSU tying for a first place finish with Chicago State University. For the Penguins, senior Kevin Schur led the way to tie for a third place finish after shooting an even 71 par. Senior Ken Keller, senior Zach Ford, and junior Cole Chrisman each tied for 10th place after shooting a 74 par. Senior Brian Cordupel shot a 78 to place 39th. On Monday, the Penguins placed in the top 10 to lead the team to a two-stroke victory. Ford finished in third place at, the, at even par with a two-round score of 142 to earn a career-best finish. Behind Ford, Schur finished with a fourth place at two over par to earn his fourth top 10 finish of the season, while Keller tied for sixth to, co to collect his fourth top 10 finish of the campaign. Chrisman was close to a top 10 finish, but fell short tying for 11th to record his sixth top 20 finish of the season. YSU finished the tournament with a total of 578, which ranks as the third lowest 36 hole performance in program history. The men's golf team continues its season as they travel to Springsboro, Ohio at the Heatherwood Golf Club to play at the Wright State Invitational on Sunday, April 17th through Monday, April 18th. 
Following four straight losses entering the month of April, the women's lacrosse team is back in the winning column following a 17-14 victory against Akron. Freshman attacker Natalie Calandra Ryan continued her dominant stretch with another multi-goal game and her 13th straight. She would finish with seven goals off 12 shots while grad student midfielder Ali Corin was behind her with five goals off of eight shots. Sophomore goalkeeper Michaela Steranko picked up the victory as she made four saves off of eight shots in just under 42 minutes in the cage. Following the victory, grad student Ali Corin caught up with our rundown crew. I think the way our coaches put it, our backs were against the wall, so I mean, we kind of dug ourselves a hole in those couple games, and it was great to get out of it, and we play the way we've been playing every day in practice, and it was great to put that on the field. This past weekend, the women's tennis team traveled, to, traveled on the road to take on Northern Kentucky Norse and the IUPUI Jaguars. Saturday's match came in a dominant fashion by the Penguins as they defeated NKU by a final of 7-0. YSU claimed the doubles point with an impressive performances by the duos of Jessica Stanmore and Lily Minich at number two and by Elisa Rigazio and Eliska Masarykova at number three. Followed by, followed by the doubles victories, the Gwens also claimed, a six, claimed all six singles matches with four of those heading into the three sets. On Sunday, Youngstown State took on the Jaguars of IUPUI, where they took their fourth straight win by a final of 5-2. The Jags took the early lead in the contest with five players as they took the doubles points, but it was all Penguins from that point on as they won four singles matches in straight sets to clinch the overall match victory. Up next for Youngstown State, they will head back to the Indoor Tennis Center as they will take on UIC on Friday, followed by Milwaukee on Saturday. First serves for both matches are set for 3 p.m. And now on to the men's tennis team, where they defeated Northern Kentucky this past Saturday with a 5-2 victory at the Five Seasons Sports Club. After dropping the doubles point, YSU found itself in a 1-0 deficit. Freshman Nathan Favier and junior Will Everett earned a 6-1 win, and three of six singles contests went into three sets with the Penguins winning two of these matches. Junior Lauren Chumondachescu earned a 7-5 win and Favier returned to the lineup and also picked up a 6-3 and 6-4 win. Sophomore David Alvarez Moreno also won a 6-3 for the Penguins. Overall, YSU is 10-8 and, and remains unbeaten in Horizon League play at 5-0. Up next, the Penguins host IUPUI Jaguars on Friday at the YSU Indoor Tennis Center. And now for the Penguin Flashback of the Week, we'll send it over to Bryce Knoll. Thanks, guys. This week, we'll be stepping into our time machine with our Penguin Flashback of the Week. This week in 2018, the softball team took down conference rival Northern Kentucky in a three-game series 2-1. Outfielder Callie Mikovich went 4-for-10 in the series with a home run, two RBIs, and four runs scored. Ellie Buffenbarger pitched 10 in the third innings of relief, allowing two runs off eight hits while striking out 12. The softball team would also cap off the month of April, winning nine of their last 10 games. That has been our Penguin Flashback of the Week. We're going to send it back to Katie and Cameron. Back to you guys. Thanks, Bryce. Well, that'll just about wrap it up for us here at the Penguin Rundown. Be sure to follow us on our social medias on Instagram and Twitter, and those are both at Penguin Rundown 1, and go to YSUSports.com for highlights and recaps. I'm Katie Rogers-Rodella. And I'm Cameron Stubbs. And we'll see you guys next week, Penguin Nation.